Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Cove. Hope you're all doing well. Today I thought we would play with Procreate. Um, I put it out there if anybody wanted to see how I draw some of these leaves or um, on Procreate that, uh, and I got some feedback that some people did want to see it. So I thought, let's do it. Um, here it is printed. So here's some leaves that I've been playing with and practicing with and uh, really enjoying it. So I think we'll draw the, the ginkgo today. So when I was visiting my friend in Kentucky last year, I came across one of these trees and stole some leaves off of it. And uh, here they are here. So I thought, yeah, let's, uh, let's do some sketching. Aren't they pretty? They go this beautiful gold color in the fall. It's a beautiful tree. I don't have anything like this here. So I thought, um, I thought let's draw this tree. It's got some beautiful veining in it, some unique veining really go straight across. So let's doodle with our Procreate. So what I like to do is I start with a new page, 11, point, 11 by 8.5, which is a standard kind of printing page. Now I'm not a uh, Procreate expert. I, uh, I'm learning as I go. I learn little tricks. I either use them or I don't. Um, but I treat my iPad Procreate program like a sketchbook. So you see I'm going to be doing a lot of sketching. When Procreate is designed uh, to be very, very efficient, uh, there's all kinds of really cool tools you can use that helps uh, move the drawing along and cr and makes things a lot easier to use. But for some reason, I still use it very much like a uh, like a sketchbook. So I have a pencil here. It's the iPad pencil. Um, I will let you know the iPad that I'm using in the description box because I have no clue what it's called. I'm not very good at uh, technology. Um, and using the painting brush uh, called a round brush and I am using it at, let's see here, let's drop it down to maybe 2%. I'm at full opacity, which is on the side here. And uh, let's just do some doodling here. So um, I'm just going to put in a top of a branch here and I'm gonna fill it in. Sometimes this fill works for me and sometimes it doesn't see. So it means that the gap there's a gap in here somewhere and it doesn't know to fill just this space. So I'm just little ones like that I'm gonna fill in. And then I'm gonna do a leaf. So I just do this kind of wiggly line. And what's nice about Procreate is none of it's permanent. It's not like an actual sketchbook. You can make adjustments after. So I'm working on my first layer here. So this is layers. And this isn't gonna be really a Procreate uh, tutorial. This is just me kind of sketching because I really am not qualified to teach much in tutorials when it comes to this program. I'm still learning a lot, but uh, there are a few tools I can share with you as I go. So that's the fill tool, uh, which is a really handy tool. So I'm just going to draw another one here and I come back. And if this space, if this unit here is completely closed, then you can tell iPad here, the, uh, the Procreate, just to fill that space. You just drag and you can do it in any color. So that's the beauty of the fill. It takes up, it, it moves things faster. So I'm gonna do another little bit of a stem down here. And I'm gonna fill that in, hopefully. Oh, that was a closed unit. And then maybe do one more leaf right here. And again, I'm just quickly doodling, like that's not the right shape right here. But that's okay, because I can play with it after. Right now I just want to get kind of a composition down. And, uh, and then play some more. So now I'm going to hit another layer because I want to put leaves behind and in front. So I'm going to now put a leaf coming, let's say across like this. And I'm just gonna fill that in like that and backfill. And then maybe one more coming up this way. Oops, I'm going the wrong way, sorry, this way. So I have to concentrate and explain. <laughs> and like I said, I'm not, I'm not an expert at Procreate, so you'll see me learning as I go as well. All right, 
so I have that one. Maybe uh, do one more this way. And we'll pull it out like this. And pull it back. Hopefully that's closed off, which it is not. So I'm going to draw it again, see if I can close it off. There we go. There we go. So that's on the next layer. These layers come in really handy when you're putting in details. Okay, so let's go back to the first layer. And if you're never sure what's on the first layer, because these little icons are kind of really hard to read, you can hit the select button and it will select just that layer. So you can move that layer and then you know what's on that layer. <laughs> Oops, let's bring that down a bit. There we go. So I'm going to stay on this layer now. And what I like to do is put in um, a little bit more. Sorry, let's make sure we got our shapes that we like before we put details in. So I'm going to go a little bit fatter on the pen here. And I'm going to just play a little bit with the form that I've drawn. Maybe pop this up a little bit. And make sure I've got a, a stem that's reasonable. And maybe this one, this guy here. Thicken him out a bit. And what else was on that layer? Those two, okay. So we'll go back and make sure that we do like the shape of that one. And I'd like to pop this one out a bit more. I'm going to take my eraser button now and go in and just clean up that. I didn't like that. So we'll go back and you can adjust your eraser width here as well. So we'll go back to this and just tidy up that little. I didn't like that part. Okay, and then we'll go back to this other layer so we don't forget, and we'll just clean up some of the shapes here. And it was this one. I'm just going to fill across there and use my eraser again. So I don't like that. Back to my pen. Maybe make this one a little bit smaller. It's gone off the page a bit, which I don't want. So I'm taking my eraser tool and I am now just carving off the edge that I don't like. And you see, because it's the other layer, it's not touching the, um, the layer on top. It will only work on that layer. So once you get a lot of practice with layers, you know what, I'm really not liking that leaf at all. Let me just redraw it. I'm just gonna erase that. Didn't like the shape of it. So you can see it's only gonna erase. Now if I go into the layer it's on, it's gonna erase that too. So you hit the undo button there. Okay, let's, uh, let's redraw that. Always make sure you're on the layer you wanna be on. That's something I learned kind of the hard way. <laughs> So I'm going to pull another leaf here, and I want this leaf to be tucked kind of behind. Let's do this one, undo, let's do this one on another layer, because maybe I'll tuck it behind both of these, just for some something a little more challenging to draw. Let's see if I close that off. Oh, yay, I did. Okay, so... Let's go to our top layer here, and they, they do go in order, so once you put the details in, I can show you how you can change the order of things and how they sit on top of each other. And I just want to make sure I'm going to grab the right ones. 
So that's the thing I find challenging the most on Procreate is figuring out what's on what layer. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a um, an alpha lock, I believe it's called. So what that does is it's a great little tool that I'm only just learning to use myself and it isolates that layer. So I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So I'm going to go to spray paint and I'm going to do this ultra fine nozzle. And I'm going to go up just a little bit here on my size. And I'm going to go a little bit lighter. Duh, I have to change color a bit. So I'm going to go to a, a medium gray. And I'm going to just demo here. See how it's highlighting just those, just that one flower, that petal. So if I put this one to the top, it's going to put it in front. So now I can color right over it like this and it's not affecting any other layers which is really neat I really like that so let me just undo this for a second and I'm going to put that layer to the top so I can see what I'm doing I'm going to hit my brush and then I'm just going to slowly lighten up that leaf so I can separate it Okay, and do that with all of them. Kind of give it a little bit of light in the middle here. So you can see I do treat it like a sketchbook. There'll be uh, YouTubers that are masters at this program and they have some really fantastic tricks that work great. And I learn a little bit as I go, but I kind of always stick to what I use the most. And uh, I just, kind of doodle it's just another kind of sketchbook for me so I'm just highlighting I don't like the shape of this one so I'm going to change the shape I'm going to go back to my black I'm going to go back to my painting the round brush and I'm just going to change the shape I'm not overly fond of the shape and I'm going to take my eraser I'm going to get rid of that part there Let's see if I like that better. So I'm gonna go, it's hard to see because it's on a black surface. Uh, go back to my airbrush and lighten that up again. Oops, I forgot to change my, my color here. Back to my airbrush. Where is it? Was it airbrush? No, spray paint, sorry. There we go. So now I can see the new shape that I, I put in there which I think I like a little better. I'm just gonna leave this one pretty light so that I can see it against the others. So I'm just finding my shapes here. <clears throat> now I'll put in white. So I just go to a white. I'm gonna go into um, drawing, sorry, inking. And I'm going to use, uh, let's do, let's try the gel pen. And you can customize these pens. So if you click on this, you can play with all these things that it does and practice and see what you you like and build your own kind of pen. It's pretty neat. Um, I'm just going to really bring this pen down on size. So really small, like a 0.1%. A and I'll blow it up. And I'm just gonna put those veins in. And again, because I'm on that layer, and I have that alpha lock on. I don't have to worry about staying within the lines. I can just go ahead and draw. So I'm just going to... I'm not going to draw all of these because it will take a long time. And then I like to go back in a black and repeat it. And there's all kinds of really fun tools on this Procreate program. Just gonna undo those last little sketches there. Okay, 
So I'm slowly building up the texture of the plant. So there's some really nice texture in here. Okay, make sure my iPad stays safe, straight. All right, let's go to the one behind it here. So now I'm gonna kind of repeat the process. Let's go into the gray and we'll go back to the airbrush, spray paint, sorry, and repeat the process. I'm gonna put in a little bit of gray Oh, sorry, you know, we so see why it's doing that. So you see when you do this, it's because we didn't put that alpha lock on. So I'm gonna go into that and I'm gonna hit the alpha lock. And there's all kinds of really cool tools, which I haven't learned yet, like clipping mask and mask, and they, they create layers within layers, which is also really helpful. Um, but baby steps for me. So I'm at the alpha lock stage of baby steps. So you see now when I do that, the same mark, I'm only getting that layer. So it's a really great tool to not stress about trying to um, like stay within the line, so to speak. Okay, so I do wanna make that a little bit darker. So I just wanted to show you how to stay within, the, how it will stay within the lines, but I'm not gonna go quite so light on this back one. So I put that there. Now I want this leaf to be behind this leaf. So I'm gonna go back to my layers and I'm gonna move this one underneath that one and it will push it to the back. Okay, so you can actually leave it where it is for now. I put the details on it, but because it's in alpha lock anyways, I'm not worried about it. I can put it under here and know that I'm not actually gonna draw on top of this other leaf. Okay, so now let's go into the white and we'll do the same thing. We'll, sorry, we'll go back to our uh, inking. Is it inking or drawing that we picked? Sketching, uh, I think it was inking and we picked the gel pen. So blow it up again and twist it for my hand and I'm just gonna give it that texture. So it's neat because now it's not gonna go on any other layer. So I wish I had learned about this long before. <laughs> it would have saved me a lot of time. So it's just another little tool to use. Um, it's a really fun tool. It's forgiving. You're not flying through papers as you're making mistakes or anything. Um, because you get to use the eraser. There are frustrating things about the program while you're learning it, for sure, like anything, but it is very user-friendly. It is a lot of fun to use, I think, anyways. Um, it's a nice break from paper, too, so if you get kind of bored of doing the same thing over and over again, it's nice to switch up the media. I'm gonna go back to uh, my spray paint here and I'm gonna put in a little bit of black right here. I just wanna darken up just the leaf a little bit behind this front leaf. Just a wee bit around the edges here. Just to push, recess that one further back. And I'm not going into a lot of detail. Um, the, the original drawing that I did has way more detail, but I, I just wanted to show you the process so that you can have fun doing this yourself if you have the program. And let's go into this layer now. So I'm going to do repeat the process one more time. So we'll go into the gray. We're in the spray paint element and I'm just gonna go and soften this a little bit. And oh, so see, going outside the lines, we didn't alpha lock it. And you get, I suppose you get into um, a habit with, when you use this program a lot, um, you'll just naturally get into the process of things. I bounce between this program and sketchbooks and watercolor and knitting and crocheting. I'm all over the place. So I don't use it on a regular basis. I kind of get in the mood to use it and then I won't touch it for a while. And that's just how I roll. 
Um, but if you're using this all the time, you'll find that uh, you'll get used to remembering to put things on alpha lock and things like that. So Now normally I would move this so that my wrist would stay straight. So I'm putting in the texture back into this one. These really nice lines and see how fast it can come together that way because of that alpha lock. Now I have yet to learn about masking and things like that, but my understanding is they create layers on top of layers so that you can move things and direct textures and things like that. So it's another thing I need to explore, but have not done yet. So I'm gonna go into the spray paint again, and I'm just basically bouncing back and forth um, from my elements here and what I'm using, uh, the, the pens that I'm using, the technique that I'm using, it's basically just repeating itself. And I really have a lot of fun with it. Till I get the desired result. Now you can Google um, some other, I just put in how to use Procreate or how to use Alpha Lock or you can find something on your iPad and think, oh, what is that? And you can Google it in YouTube and it will, it will find somebody who will show you how to use it. And they are, you know, masters at this program. So my tutorials are not really on how to use Procreate, but maybe how to use Procreate as a sketchbook. <laughs> it's a good beginner, you know? This is a good beginner video, I think. There we go. Okay, so let's go into the black. I want to go into, sorry, the spray paint again. And in black this time, I want to darken up this. I'm going to go into this layer and darken up in here. So it's starting to create some form. You've got some separation here, and this is where you can really play with uh, what you what you might like to really push back. So if I darken this a little more, I may bring my size down a little. I can really push that behind. And then, so this is kind of a funny shape, but that's all right. Uh, let's go into this first layer here and put some detail in the branch. So maybe I want to, hmm, let's put a little bit of um, spray paint, a little bit more softer edges on this here. It's a bit harsh for me. So I'm gonna bring it down a little bit and I'm just gonna soften up the edge. I just don't like the... Now, another thing you can do, too, and this is a really fun tool. I've shown this in other videos. Is This is the smudging tool. And you can, again, pick anything you... Any kind of brush that you like. I usually go painting an, uh, an untitled brush. And what it does is it smudges those colors together. It's like a blending tool. So it comes in... I, I find it a really fun tool to use. It's like using your finger to smudge charcoal. And it can create a really nice soft effect without adding more color. It just spreads those colors. So I can pull the black up or I can go this way and pull the gray down. And that's, that's the fun of the smudge. So it's a nice little tool to use. It comes in pretty handy. I'm going to darken this in here. Just bring that down a bit undo. I just find the definition of this one a little bit lost. There we go. And then go back to my smudging tool and just soften some of the edges. And you can make this a little bit bigger. You can turn it into, let's do the, maybe an airbrush spray paint smudge. Oh, sorry. Smudge and then spray paint. And then I can just soften it that way. So these tools are really 
fun. Now, I saw a lady on a YouTube channel who creates watercolor brushes. So I think I might one day purchase those. I'm just going to erase that end. And the eraser tool is a really great tool too. So I just kind of bring it down here and I'll come up around the edge and just clean anything up I don't like. Making sure I'm on the right layer so I can get rid of this little thing here. Get rid of this. So it's a really handy tool. Okay, so I think I need a little bit more of a highlight in here. I'm going to go back to my inking with my gel pen. Let's try a different pen. Let's try um, Gesinki, Gesinski ink. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I think I said that right. I'm going to bring that way down. So I want a nice fine line here and maybe pop a few highlights of those textures in there. And you just keep playing and playing, learning as you're going. And have fun developing different plants and leaves and things like that. I'm gonna go and show you a little bit on the stem in a second. I just wanna put a little bit of highlights in here. Maybe go back to the black for a second. Put a little contrasting color in there. And another thing that's really great about this program is you can scan your, your images. And I'll show you that in just one sec. Okay, and then one more detail. We'll go back to the airbrush. Spray paint. I keep calling it airbrush, but it's spray paint. And we will just blow that up a bit and put that in. So it's nice. You can just throw it around the edge here and you'll have to stay in the lines, which saves you a lot of time. <laughs> okay. Let's do a little bit on the branch. So you can see how I kind of put details in the branch. Um, so I'm going to go to the white. I'm going to go to uh, the ink. And we'll stay, we'll go back to the gel pen. And you'll find there's a lot of pens that you do like and don't like. You kind of form a collection. I'm just going to put in a little scribble here. So some highlighted areas of these little branches and you know what I didn't do is I didn't give this one a stem that's maybe why it looks funny to me so let's give it a stem instead we'll make the branch end here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin it out I'm just going to erase back that's what was bothering me <laughs> I'll go back to this layer and tidy up that layer which is this one I'm going to hit the erase button. Maybe it's, sorry, it's this one maybe. Yeah, hit the erase button. And we'll just clean up in here. And back to this guy. And clean up this. Thin him out a bit. So the eraser tool is really handy. I really like the eraser tool. It's like a different pen. It's like using a white pen, I guess. I think that's a bit better. This line is bothering me, so I think it's part of this one. Let's see if I can erase. There we go. There. That's a bit better. So now I'm going to put in the detail a bit more. So I'll go with the white gel pen. Maybe pop, bump it up a bit on size. And, oh, I'm in the wrong layer, sorry. Put Go back to this layer and just kind of give it a little bit of a highlight. I go back to my dark and I throw some of that in there. I just want to make sure that my stems get the, the attention too. I'm just put 
kind of decide what's in front and what's behind. So this guy will be in back. This guy will be in back. Maybe we'll put this one in front. And then I can take my, um, sorry, my smudging tool and just kind of smudge it out a little bit. That was erased. I hit the eraser on that, so I don't know why I did that, but I must have hit it. So I'm just going to undo to that point. Go back to my smudging tool and soften this. So you see how it blends? So where it's not blending is on a different layer, that's all. So learning your layers and remembering what's on your layers can be challenging. Um, that was my biggest challenge when I started was what did I draw on what layer? And I soon, I soon figured out how to, how to figure out what, how to build the layers um, so that, I'm trying to think of a layer right now, here, this one, so that I um, draw them in, in a way that I, it makes sense to, um, <laughs> I'm trying to talk and draw, sorry, it's draw them in a way that uh, I know how to follow the layer. So if I was drawing petals, for example, one, one row of petals would be one layer, the next petals would be the next layer, and you kind of want to do the opposite of where they overlap each other so that you can do that alpha lock and separate them. So I just wanted to show you that really quick um, and just kind of play with uh, the results you can get. And again, I would keep working on this, keep working on this until I got something I liked, but I think you get the idea uh, how to alpha lock them and how to put the textures in. And what's nice is you can scan your images. So for example, the um, pine cones that I drew in the last couple of videos um, right here, I scan them and here they are. So you can now play with them even further. So if you wanted to, so I'm not gonna to touch this one, but I'm gonna hit duplicate. So I slide it over and I hit duplicate. So now I have two. I can add color to them. So I can put in uh, a nice kind of brown here and really take them to the next level if I wanted to, right? Let's go into maybe, um, airbrushing. Let's try this one. And just put some color into your sketches that you did on paper are now available in your Procreate. And you can take them to another level. It's really fun. It really is a great program. I love it. I use it for my Etsy store all the time. This is how I load my videos into my Etsy store. Um, some of my video, some of my Etsy products are drawn right on Procreate and others are scanned. My drawings are scanned and put in um, this way where I can also manipulate them if I wanted to. Or I just scan them and set them up and Bob's your uncle. They're, they're done. So something you can do too, uh, if you wanted to create layers or separate these, you can take the select button and you can cut it and then three fingers down and say cut. Oops, I have to make sure I'm on the right. So sorry, they're already in layers, that's why. So let's put them down. So if you merge down and you put all your layers on one page, so they're not individual layers anymore. So I wanted to show you how you can separate them. So I can select it and then I can three fingers down, cut it, and it disappears. Three fingers down, paste. And now I can add it to this one, for example. Say if I wanted two pine cones um, coming out. I just wanna show you how you can have really a lot of fun manipulating your sketches. So say you want two pine cones coming out together. So now you have two separate ones. So you can take your eraser and you can erase around here. So you can alpha lock this and alpha lock this. And now you can go around and erase other details here. Take your time. You can blow it up so you can see what you're doing here. 
and there you go. You can separate it and then you can start coloring it. I wonder if this would read. Let's go back to that one. Yeah, I'm on the right loop. Let's see if it would. So it'll fill the whole thing that you cut. So that's how I learn. I just kind of experiment and see and I go, okay, that's not what I want it to do. So I'd either figure out a way to resolve that or I would just go ahead and start start coloring. And then you treat your sketches that you've done like a coloring book. You know, it's just really, really fun. And you can reuse your images over and over again. So it's a great little program. I hope that, um, I hope you give the, the, um, drawings like uh, the leaves here where where's my leaves oh where did I put them there they are um the leaves and things a chance to experiment and as you can see the more detail so I softened them in and I I cleaned up the edges and things and I really really enjoy doing it <laughs> I'm making all kind of marks on these uh over here's the pacific willow so I really had fun playing with the veins and um, shading, playing with that smudging tool. It was really fun. I uh, hope you give it a try. I hope that it was helpful. And uh, we'll see you next time. We'll have, uh, we'll have something else going. All right. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Bye.